Nope, not at all. Remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one. Okay, kidding aside, you might be wondering if I think the story missions are nothing but glorified archive missions, then what's the point of this video? Well, random stranger who should definitely hit the subscribe button, I'll tell you why. For me, and probably you, the removal of elements like the hero skill trees and customization was a big deal because we had been promised something and it felt like Blizzard lied to us and just ripped it away. For most of us, it was at very least a huge disappointment, and to others, it was heartbreaking because we knew that what we were excitedly looking forward to is now likely never going to become a reality. In my opinion, our anger at Blizzard was justified, and still is. But I recently returned to the US, and since I'm finally back in the same time zone, I've been playing with my friend group for whom Overwatch 2 has become their main game. But interestingly enough, while they play almost every day and do read the patch notes when they release, they didn't really play Overwatch 1 and they didn't know about the previous plans for the story mode. So not only had they never experienced the archive missions before, they also had no expectations whatsoever for the campaign. And you know what? They love this new mode. They bought the $39 ultimate pack and felt like it was a great deal to get the battle pass, a bunch of cosmetics, and a story mode. They were impressed with all the work that went into the voice lines and loved being able to take the heroes they enjoy in PvP and use them in Halo style mission environments. And they enjoy watching all the cutscenes for the first time. They've even beaten some of the missions multiple times on different difficulty levels. It was astounding to me. Here I was going into the first mission feeling very unimpressed because I was comparing it to an expectation that I had built up in my mind. Meanwhile, my friends were just happy to be playing. And one of my buddies insisted that I just had to make a video about this new season and talk about all the great things Overwatch 2 is doing. To be honest, it caught me off guard, and I wasn't exactly sure if I was going to even talk about Overwatch 2 after my last video because I was in such a bad place about it mentally. But in that moment, I kind of felt the need to reevaluate everything I was feeling and put myself in the shoes of the average player playing Overwatch. Because as much as it might seem strange to think about, I am not the average Overwatch player. And chances are, neither are you. Sure, maybe we're not the type of player that's sweating it up every single game, and maybe we just play Overwatch to have fun and don't really care too much about whether we win or lose, but even still, the fact that you're watching this video and the fact that I am making this video means that we're a bit more invested than the average player that just hops on Overwatch a couple times a week and has a good time playing with their friends. We had built up all these expectations and cared about the direction the PvE was going because we are deeper invested than the average person playing this game. And on top of that, we've seen Overwatch go through multiple developments, so what we consider a significant value add is often different from a player that doesn't have any expectations at all. It made me think back to my first time playing through the archive missions and even the first time I played Junkenstein's Revenge. Of course, these days, those modes don't really feel all that special because we've seen them all before. Some of them we've seen a bit too many times. But the first time we saw them, if you really think back, we were just as excited. Praising Blizzard for the creativity and hard work that went into making the modes, designing the combat encounters, and recording all those new voice lines. We all have some memory of playing with that shiny new thing Blizzard created and loving it no matter how simple it might seem in hindsight. I mean, just think of how simple Overwatch 1 was at release compared to where the game is now. And remembering that helped me in the moment to let go of my expectations for what Overwatch 2 PvE was supposed to be and just play the game that was in front of me. And you know what? I actually had a good time. While the mission structure might be a bit simple and the enemy design isn't exactly revolutionary, it is fun to be able to play Overwatch with your friends and just relax and have a conversation while you mow down some bots. And to be fair, the higher difficulties do provide some actual challenge. Rockets on Legendary are stupid, by the way. Let's be clear that I am not saying what Blizzard did was okay. In my opinion, they could have avoided a lot of player backlash if they had just announced that this is what was coming from the release of Overwatch 2 instead of leading players to have false expectations. Sure, some players might have still been upset, but I think most of us can understand that in game development, things don't always go according to plan. And of course, if you have a lot of issues going on in the background the way they did at Blizzard, it makes perfect sense that you wouldn't be able to deliver on the promises that you had once made. People aren't upset about the changes to PvE, we're upset about the fact that we felt lied to. And to me, the proof of that is in how my friends who are not aware of the lie have reacted to this release. If I'm being as unbiased as possible, what they actually released isn't that bad when you remove the context of what we were supposed to get. As much as we might have given Blizzard grief for overusing things like Junkenstein's Revenge and the Archive missions, on release we all pretty much agreed that those things were good. And these new story mode missions are basically just more of that but done better. 
So for newer players that don't have the PvE context that we all do, I can see why this mode is being praised. And if they keep up this level of content going forward, I can see the average player remaining happy with Overwatch 2 for a long time. Which is the reason why even though I'm still personally upset about how PvE was handled, I've kind of changed my perspective on the situation overall when it comes to the player base. If you've been around the channel for a while, then you know that I'm not one to tell people what to do or think when it comes to video games. In my opinion, games are first and foremost about having fun, so you should do what you want. And that includes not playing it. If the PvE situation for Overwatch 2 made you want to quit, by all means stay away from the game. Boycott it, criticize it, leave it a bad review, do what you want. But I also think that means you should let others do what they want too. Like I said, while I might personally be upset with the way Blizzard handled the information about PvE, if what they actually released makes players happy, I'm not going to tell those players to stop having fun just because I'm upset. Plus, even if the PvE isn't what I wanted, I'd be lying if I said I'm not impressed with everything else that came with this season. As a support main, I think it's awesome that we keep getting new support heroes and we're finally catching up to the other classes. Ilari seems like a character that's going to be fun to play and useful at all levels. And the new game mode Flashpoint is awesome. It feels like what 2CP should have been all along. I for one am really excited for it to get added to the rank pool. And to top it all off, the battle pass has actually been adjusted to make it feel more rewarding even at the early levels. Which is great seeing as how buying the story missions required me to actually pay for the battle pass this time. So if I'm being completely candid and looking at it from a less biased perspective, this season is an absolute win for the player base when it comes to the amount of content released to keep the game interesting. And if you won't take my word for it, the concurrent player count and Twitch viewership show that the game is still in a pretty healthy place, even if it's not at the level of its historical peak. So to answer the question posed by the title, no, we were not wrong about PvE. It's still just a moderately improved version of the archive mission. But if the majority of the player base is happy with what we've gotten, it's hard for me to argue that this mode is a failure. It does suck that Blizzard was able to come out completely on top after the backlash because to me it seems like that's the exact reason they keep doing things like this. But at the same time, in my opinion, the most important thing is that the people playing the game are happy with it. And as it stands, the numbers kind of make it seem like they are. So who am I to say otherwise? Anyway, this is just a short video for today. I wanted to get my thoughts out about this, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you disagree. Let me know how you're feeling about Overwatch 2 down in the comments below. Also remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.